Hello everyone. Welcome to a module on the renal system. In this module, we will talk about renal tubular acidosis. Okay. So, let us talk about what is basically renal tubular acidosis. It is a disorder of the renal tubules. Okay. So, the defect primarily lies in the renal tubules which causes a normal anionic gap metabolic acidosis. Now, what is a normal anionic gap metabolic acidosis? Anionic gap is calculated by the sodium concentration minus the chloride concentration plus bicarbonate concentration. This is the formula for anionic gap. So when the anionic gap inside the body during a situation of metabolic acidosis is in the normal range that is from 8 to 12, it is normal anionic gap metabolic acidosis. A normal anionic gap metabolic acidosis is often associated with hyperchloremic state. Okay, so let us start with the first renal tubular acidosis that is the distal renal tubular acidosis or the distal RTA which is the type 1 RTA. Okay, what is the basic defect in distal renal tubular acidosis? It is the inability of the alpha intercalated cells to secrete hydrogen ions. Now, since the hydrogen ions are not being able to be secreted by the kidney, there is an increase in the buildup of the hydrogen which leads to acidosis. And there is no new bicarbonate generated to compensate the hydrogen ion which leads to metabolic acidosis. Okay, we all know that during acidosis, the pH is always less than 7.4. It is less than 7.4, but how much less? In renal tubular acidosis, that is the first type, that is DT, DRTA or the distal renal tubular acidosis, the urine pH is more than 5.5 and less than 7.4. Is it clear? So it is more than 5.5. In distal renal tubular acidosis, it is a hypovolumic, hypokalemic state. Okay, that means the serum potassium concentration is less or it is decreased. Now, let us talk about the primary causes of this defect in the alpha intercalated cells. It is caused due to amphotericin B toxicity, analgesic nephropathy, congenital anomalies that is the obstruction of the urinary tract and autoimmune diseases like lupus. Is it clear? So I'll again repeat the causes. It is the amphotericin B toxicity, analgesic nephropathy, congenital anomalies, that is the obstruction of the urinary tract and autoimmune diseases like SLE. Now what are the associations of distal renal tubular acidosis? There is increased risk for calcium phosphate in the kidney. That means calcium phosphate can be precipitated in the kidney if there is a scenario of distal renal tubular acidosis. Okay. Now, why is that? Now, due to decrease in the urinary pH and increase in the bone turnover, which due to buffering, since the excretion of the hydrogen ions is decreased, there is excessive bone turnover and decrease in the urinary pH, it can lead to formation of the calcium phosphate stones. Is it clear? Now let us talk about renal tubular acidosis type 2, that is proximal renal tubular acidosis. I like to add on that the urinary pH is greater than 5.5. Okay, so there is a increase in the urinary pH which leads to formation of calcium phosphate stones. Okay, now talking about proximal renal tubular acidosis, the primary cause is due to the defect in the reabsorption of bicarbonate reabsorption. Okay, so it is a defect in the reabsorption of bicarbonate in the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, since the bicarbonate is not reabsorbed, it is highly excreted in the urine, leading to metabolic acidosis. The bicarbonate content in the body is secreted out, and hence the state in the body is acidotic. The urine can be acidified again by the alpha intercalated cells in the collecting ducts but not enough to overcome the increased bicarbonate secretion. 
Is it clear? Now, this can be often confused with Fan-Conkey syndrome we have seen in the renal tubular defects module. This is renal tubular acidosis. We have seen Fan-Conkey syndrome in the renal tubular defects module. And hence, Fan-Conkey syndrome is a cause of proximal renal tubular acidosis. Okay. The other causes include multiple myeloma and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Is it clear? Now, the urine pH is again more than 5.5 when resorptive threshold for the serum bicarbonate is exceeded. Okay, so when the resorptive threshold of the serum bicarbonate is high or it is exceeded, the urine pH is greater than 5.5. But when the bicarbonate is depleted and below the resorptive threshold, it is less than 5.5 so the urinary pH is variable is it clear now it is an increased risk of hypophosphatemic rickets as in the fan conkey syndrome so please look at the module of renal tubular defects to know more about fan conkey syndrome and it is related to proximal renal tubular acidosis which is a type 2 rta is it clear now let us just jump to type 4 renal tubular acidosis that is hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis. Okay, now how is hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis caused? It is majorly due to hypoaldosteronism or aldosterone resistance. Okay, now aldosterone resistance can lead to hyperkalemia which, is which can lead to decrease in the ammonia synthesis in the proximal convoluted tubule leading to decrease in the ammonium excretion. We all know that the H plus is excreted with ammonia in form of ammonium ion, correct? Now, since this goes down, the release of H plus also goes down leading to acidosis. The serum calcium, serum potassium concentration goes high and hence it is a hyperkalemic state okay the ph of the urine is usually less than 5.5 but can be variable now what are the causes of hyperkalemic tubular acidosis it is due to decrease in the aldosterone production okay example diabetic hyperreninism or ace inhibitors or arbs that is angiotensin receptor blockers okay it can be also caused due to other drugs like NSAIDs, heparin, cyclosporin and adrenal insufficiency. Okay, now hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis, the type 4 renal tubular acidosis is related to aldosterone and hence please check the module on the adrenal gland where I've explained the formation of aldosterone and its various other defects as well. Okay, now Due to adrenal insufficiency, there can be decrease in the aldosterone production. So, the first cause is the decrease in aldosterone production. The second cause is due to aldosterone resistance. Okay, so it is due to aldosterone resistance. Now, when can aldosterone resistance take place? It can take place during potassium sparing diuretics. When we use excessive amount of potassium sparing diuretics for a long period of time, it can lead to aldosterone resistance or can be caused due to nephropathy, which is caused due to obstruction. Okay, so if there is nephropathy, it can lead to obstruction and hence cause hyperkalemic tubular acidosis. Now, these are the three most important renal tubular acidosis. And it is a very important part of renal pathology. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.